This is a review and unboxing of set 6575 Polar Base from the Arctic line. It was released in the year 2000 and retailed for $60 and according to the box is 435 pieces. This is the biggest set in the Arctic line and it's one I've always wanted ever since playing Lego Racers 2 as a kid. So I'm excited to finally be able to build it today. First let's take a look at all the sides. On the top here we just see some general information. On the left side here we get some cool action shots of it being built. And then the same action shot on the right side. Then on the bottom we've got a form to join the LEGO club. Then finally on the back we see it in a couple different configurations as well as some alternate builds. So let's go ahead and open it up. And this might actually be the first set I've ever reviewed that doesn't have a punch tab. Instead we've got a sticker on the side so I'm going to try to carefully remove that. So inside the outer box we've got this cardboard tray. And I'm not sure when LEGO started doing numbered bags but it looks like we've got a precursor to that here. They're not exactly numbered, but they are broken down into individual builds, so that's cool. I'm just going to go ahead and show off the individual bags and lay everything out here. We've also got the two large balloon canopies coming outside the bags. And then a separate perforated bag with the treads and stickers. And then two promotional pamphlets that we've seen before from the Arctic line. And lastly, the instructions, which is a pretty hefty booklet. And in the instructions, no surprise, we've got some Arctic pictures. Some pretty cool photographs here. Alright, so we're just going to do this bag by bag the way the instructions have it broken down so we can keep it moving pretty quick.
So here's the completed set. It's got a lot going on, so we're going to look at it section by section. First, though, we'll look at the minifigures, and it includes six. So here are all six of them lined up. First off, we've got this black and blue explorer, and he even comes with an interchangeable baseball cap. Then we have a blue and black explorer here, different torso and face print than the other guy. Then we have a green explorer, and this one has a green baseball cap instead of the standard green hood. Then we have another green explorer, except this time with the standard green hood. And same torso and face print as the other guy. Then we have a doctor, and he's got a red suit, and this is the first time I've seen these in the Arctic line, so it's cool to get a third color. He's got the medical insignia on his hat and torso. And then lastly, we have our first female character in the Arctic line. She's also got a red jumpsuit, however, she has a different print and a little polar bear icon in the corner there. Not sure what that represents. So now we're going to look at the vehicles, and our first one here is this treaded ATV thing. It's got a pair of snowshoes and a buzzsaw clipped to the back, as well as a poseable arm to carry the ice boulder, and even a place on the truck to load it up. And the roof here just hinges open to reveal the inside. We've got our driver here, and the only thing inside is a steering wheel. No studs on the actual seat, so he lifts out pretty easily, which is nice. Next up, we have the helicopter, which looks like it's part of the medical team and is designed for search and rescue. On the left side here, we've got some accessories. None on the other side, but we do have two clips for some. And then in the back, we have a tow cable, which can be lowered. And you can use that to hook onto the stretcher to lift people out of dangerous situations. Then we just got a generic control panel on the inside of the cockpit. Lastly, we have this little snowmobile build that also has a detachable trailer that can carry the stretcher as well. Moving on to the base builds, this control tower is definitely my favorite section. Outside, we've got two pairs of snowshoes and these two canisters, which are probably oxygen or gas or something like that. You can use your imagination for those. On the inside here, we've got an ice pick and buzzsaw, as well as a yellow backpack and then binoculars. But the coolest part is definitely the control tower on top. This whole canopy opens up here to reveal the inside. And inside here, we've got some really cool details. we got this map piece in the back, which is stickered. But then we have these two printed computer pieces, and I really like those as well as a printed radar tile here, and then even a table for his cup of coffee, as well as a place to store his snow hood, and then a swiveling chair for him to navigate it all. Our second section here is the medical bay. We've got the medical insignia on the store here, as well as a latch to open it up. We've also got these hand signalers, probably to help the helicopter land. On the inside here, we've got a printed slope computer piece, as well as a printed tile with a pen and pad and a stethoscope. I've never seen this tile piece before, so that's a cool piece to get. Third, we have the research lab, and outside we've got this polar bear, which I've said before is just a great mold. Very accurate, and it's got some articulation in the head. Then we have a translucent ice boulder, which opens up to reveal a translucent neon green scorpion, which is another great piece. Then the store has a printed x-ray tile, as well as a printed control panel next to it, and it swivels open just like this. So what you're supposed to do to get the orbs into the research lab is you offload them onto these rails here. Swivel the door open. And then you just lift that up, and it falls right in. So if we move to the inside here, we can take our orb, put it on the table here, and then we have a working magnifying glass attached to the table as well. Then finally, onto our last segment here. Looks like we've got a weather tower. Then looking on the inside here, we've got two printed slope computer pieces, as well as a stickered weather forecast. That's a very cool design there. And then we've got a radio and binoculars. So adjusted for inflation, the set would have retailed for $89.06 in 2018. However, current used prices have it at $62.15, which definitely feels like a more reasonable price for this whole thing. I definitely like the use of the four base plates here. It gives it a very fleshed out feel while still allowing it to be modular. And as you saw, it's more of a facade model since there's not much of an interior. But I think they do just enough with putting accessories and details on the inside to let you use your imagination for the rest, while still giving a very cool base look from the exterior. This right here is my favorite configuration because it closes off the base completely and makes it pretty compact, but still feels like a sizable base. Additionally, you get plenty of unique vehicles and minifigures to carry out all your Arctic expeditions. All in all, this is a great set, and I would definitely recommend it if you could find it for $60. It really gives the full scope of the 2000 Arctic line all wrapped into one set. Anyways, those are my thoughts. Thanks for watching.